Hi everyone, this is Aditya. Today we will be discussing about the APM tutorial 1. In this tutorial, we will be looking into the introductory part of APM in case of uh, Java Selenium driver. Okay, so let's see the our agenda for today. So, in this tutorial, we will be looking into what is APM, following why should we use APM, then the comparison analysis between the different tools, and then we'll come to the hybrid, mobile, and native apps. Then the APM architecture in Android, APM architecture in iOS, and the different pros and cons of the APM. Okay. So before we start, let's have a look what is APM. So guys, as we will already have about that, the APM is the open source state test automation framework for mobile testing. And it has, been, it has been developed and supported by the source lab to automate the mobile hybrid, native and web applications. Web applications means the mobile web applications. Okay. And APM is an important feature that it uses the JSON wire protocol internally to interact with the iOS and the Android native app using the Selenium web driver. So I will come to it later how the interaction is going on between the iOS and Android. And another thing, APM is basically a Node.js server that can handle and manipulate all kind of Android iOS function and operations. Okay. So, I mean, why should we choose APM? I mean, should we have only one option to choose APM in a mobile automation testing framework? No. We are having so many different different tools available in the market. So first question comes and is that why should we choose APM when there is options like Selenrite, Robotium already. Okay. So let's have a look into our comparison analysis why anyone should go for APM. I found this is comparison analysis bit much uh, helpful. So for APM, first of all, it is a free and open source state test automation testing framework and the important feature is that it supports both iOS and Android platform. Along with that, it can also support hybrid mobile and native applications automations and one of the important aspect of the APM that, I mean, when you are using APM to automate your applications, so you don't have to need access to the source code library, okay. So the application under test here, whatever the application you are going to test, which are basically you are going to publish in the Play Store or App Store, on that application will be carried out our uh, automation testing. So it's kind of black box tool and there is no extra agent we need to install uh, if you use the APM. Uh, another thing is that it doesn't reinstall applications device, instead it just invoke application already installed on the device. So each time we are, when we will be operating on some applications, we don't need to install the applications each time. It will just invoke the applications and address manipulative operations. Okay, and it's it support multiple framework uh, programming languages like Java, Ruby, Perl, Python, C sharp, PHP. Cause the it uh, support the Selenium web driver. So in the in case of Selenium web driver, as it supports all kind of languages, so you can also get the support from all kind of languages like uh, on different different framework also included for APM and it is also compatible with the CI Jenkins and the one of the important part is that APM has the very strong community and github activity okay so it will be very helpful for us for any project purpose uh, to go for APM now we'll look into why what is the case for Robotium and Sendroid so in terms of Robotium, we can see that it's also a free and open source testing framework, but the main drawback is that it only supports Android. So iOS doesn't support in Robotium. And another thing is that when you are using Robotium to automate your mobile test cases, your Android test script, you should have access. You should have access to the source code of the library or the application under test. You should have access to the application's code, building code. And we will be carried our uh, Robotium testing, we will write our test script and this will modify the existing code to test. So whatever the app you are going to publish in the Play Store, yeah, App Store for, for no, no, sorry, uh, for Robotium there is only Play Store because this is only support for Android. So basically the app you are going to publish in Play Store, I mean uh, the same app we, not, we will not be using in, in case of Robotium automation testing framework. So the code will be different, the actual application we are going to publish will be different. And we need the source code and extra agent we will need in case of Robotium automation testing framework. And another thing we can see that the small change in Robotium code lets the complete rebuild of application installed on the device. As I've told you, this is kind of white box testing. White box testing will be carried out. I know, I hope you are already aware of what is the black box testing and what is white box testing. So using the Robotium, we'll be carrying out our white box testing part and Another thing is that, uh, I mean, uh, unlike APM, it only supports Java language. Okay, so other than not, uh, I mean, there is 
no other languages and framework support okay and not compatible with selenium at all obviously it won't support any selenium features that uh, is only compatible with apm and uh, robotium has their uh, community and activity is less proactive than the apm community currently okay now let's have a look what is selenroid okay uh, like apm or robotium selenroid is one of the free and open source framework but the main drawback is that it also support for android applications yeah android devices only okay so using the well that we can usually carrying out our testing for native hybrid and mobile app but there is no scope for ios devices so it is also black box testing now already provided and currently the apm package library itself having a standard feature cause apm only support uh, api level uh, higher than 7 higher than 16 so from api level has from starting to 17 to higher level only apm support so it Currently, the in APM library, the cylinder is uh, already there. Okay, so it's a good option to go for the APM because if you are going to use the uh, API level less than 17, so you will find it will automatically switch to the cylinder portion in APM itself. But talking about the cylinder part, it only supports API level 10 to API level 19. So Android version 2.3.3 to have Android version 4.4 .4 KitKat. Another thing is that uh, Selenium is fully compatible with Selenium WebDriver and CI with Jenkins compatible. Selenium basically um, the term refer to we are doing Selenium on Android devices. That's the term basically for main Selenium for Android. Okay. But uh, if you look into that, the community and the GitHub activity is uh, less stronger than the APM. So all our features and that is compared, we can see that the Free, all of them are the free open source tool but only APM does support iOS and Android and if we use APM we don't have to use uh, carrying or test uh, as a white box testing and we don't do, we don't need the source code or library that will modify the existing code so this is the important feature that anyone should consider uh, while choosing the best tool for mobile automation testing okay so now let's have a Loop that APM supports. So currently in the market we are having uh, three different kind of app, apps. One is mobile web app, another is native app, another one is hybrid app. So what is mobile web app? So whatever the applications, yeah, web application, the URL we are accessing the desktop. If you are going to use the access the same application in the mobile browser, there's a the different versions. I hope you have noticed that it open as a mobile. I mean, if you are accessing some web URL the application in mobile, then it is considered as a mobile applications. So we can say that web apps or website URL that we access in mobile platform is basically mobile web app. Next comes what is native app. Native app basically application developed for particular platforms. Support uh, APK file is developed for Android and IPA file developed for only iOS. Uh, example like uh, Android camera, I mean uh, game developed for Android. Those are kind of native applications only for platform dependent. Okay. And the next thing is that what is hybrid app. So hybrid app, we can say this is a also a web app, but it's combined the both features of the native and a mobile web. So it's basically built using the HTML5 and JavaScript, and then it is wrapped inside a thin native container. The container like where a different different container available. Uh, example like Cordova container we will be using. Uh, so using the hybrid app, it provides access to the native platform features, but uh, the look and feel will be some different uh, than the native app because is basically like in the hybrid app we will be accessing the html platform uh, inside the native app so in terms of in case of uh, the look and feel features and the user uh, uh, user interactions i i mean native is the uh, native app hold the front line among these three apps okay now let's have a look onto the example so I hope you have seen that Facebook app that has been used uh, early 2012 and 13. And this is the app. Uh, this is the app uh, was built uh, for both iOS and Android device. This was the Facebook hybrid app at the time. Okay. So the, this app was uh, having the same HTML, was built using the HTML5 and JavaScript, and it was uh, for the both platform. I mean, for iOS and for both Android, both platform. We use the, usually use that app. And this is the app you have seen that after the letter that Facebook switched to the native app, native applications. And if you install the Facebook application in your device, it will uh, comes this way. Like it's a look and feel. I mean, uh, much more better than the hybrid app that we, we used to we have we are using before. 
and and one more thing now this is the facebook login page of the mobile web application so if you access in the facebook in your firefox mobile yeah chrome mobile so you will see that the login page will appear this way so we can see the difference that what is the hybrid app the native app the mobile web version of the facebook okay okay now let's have a look about the apm architecture in android how it is uh, carried how the apm server operate in the android so uh, in case of android we are uh, having some ui automator this is the android native ui automation framework which support running gnut test case directly to the device from the command line along with that you can also use the selenium features that can support multiple languages and we can communicate writing different different languages with the apm server okay to support so suppose you have written some uh, basic command element dot type is some element that click you are passing some command from the selenium web driver script so what we will do in case of apm android so it will send the commands in form of json via the http request to the apm server okay so apm server will get the request and then apm proxies command to the ui automator test case running on the android okay so ui automator is the android native ui automation framework so so apm server which uh, pass those command to the ui automator test case and the tcp server that we can see that is uh, staying inside the sandro devices it perceives the same from the tcp client tcp client will be inside in the apm server and then tcp server will execute it using the bootstrap.jar staying in the I mean, inside that uh, android uh, devices okay so once all the uh, commands are executed successfully then it will send back the log to the apm server and accordingly it will return the response so this way the apm in the android operated okay now let's have a look uh, how the apm what in case of ios devices so for ios devices it's kind of different so unlike the android devices in apple by in ios devices we will be using the instrument feature so we will be using instrument instead of the ui automation in android development so let's have a look i mean when you write some command in the selenium uh, like element dot type element dot click so it will first send the command in from json via http request to the apm server that we can see inside the apm server we can see that instrument controller for ios and instrument command server okay so apm will proxy the command to the instrument server and this instrument server will communicate to the instrument command client that is the mediator between the devices and the apm server so the instrument command client will send the corresponding response to the devices and the device having that bootstrap.js it will pick the same and execute it is in the ios environment and once all that operation has been done the command has been executed successfully then the boost and then the device uh, will send the response back to the instrumentation command client and it will again fetch get back to the apm server that the, all the executions has been done command execution has been met okay so if we see that for android and for ios so android operation we don't have any mediator like uh, instrumentation command client unlike for android we only having that ui automator that is operating between the device and the selenium web driver okay and for ios we are having some instrumentation command client between the device and the apm server and in android devices we are having bootstrap.jar we can see that we are having the bootstrap.jar method not 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 this method uh it's a bootstrap jar we will be using to execute our command okay and the tcp server will be residing inside that uh, devices and in case of ios we will be having the bootstrap js in ios environment and it will help us to execute the command we will pass okay so now let's what is the pros and cons of the apm if you use that so for the pros the advantage we have discussed in my earlier slide let me show you yeah so the advantage of this card is open source tool support both platform support multiple frameworks and selenium web driver ci jenkins compatible very strong community github activity doesn't need to deinstall applications it doesn't need extra agent for carrying out our testing mobile automation testing and no need to access the source code so it's basically black box type of testing will be doing in case of apm automations and still there are several disadvantage of using apm uh, 
uh, first decision they will say that it's a lack of strong documentations currently that we have found and the second disadvantage I have found that the uh, limitation of Android API support below 17 so API will support uh, API level above 16 so it will support from 17 to next 23 year 24 that is coming 23 for marshmallow 25 uh, year 24 for uh, nougat so it will support Android features uh, from starting from Android Jelly Bean 4.2 versions but currently in the Selenium uh, latest version, uh, I mean APM latest version, uh, there is uh, the li APM library also incorporating the feature of the Selenroid inside. Okay, so in case of if you are testing with the APM for uh, API level below 17 um, for ginger bread, ice cream sandwich, uh, Android versions, so it will automatically switch to the Selenroid version and it will help you to carry your I mean test successfully. Okay. On another disadvantage we can see that the image confirmation is not there and so we, we cannot do this kind of operation if we are using APM. Another thing we can say that in iOS we can have only one only one run instances okay on instrument for Mac OS. So we can have we can only run our iOS script on one device per Mac machine. So in case we want to run multiple devices our script from multiple iOS devices so we can't do we are having some limitation over that but currently we are uh, mitigating this issue in a source lab environment okay so source lab mobile cloud environment we can currently run our script on multiple ios devices in the uh, single mac os okay so in the next tutorial we'll be seeing about the installation part of the apm along with uh, installing the sdk file for android node.js setup and all other different segment or software that we have to install for carrying out our mobile automation testing using the APM. So that's all for today, guys. And I have shared the reference inside that below link, and you can go through that for if you want to learn more about the APM. So thank you, thank you for watching.